I'm super excited. Tim is super excited. A uh, personal friend of ours. Um, and Tim was actually just on his live conference this past Saturday. Uh, the person who I'm going to bring on with us today, his name is Cody Askins. I'm going to read a little bit about his bio. Uh, but just to let you guys know, Cody and his wife, Lauren, both amazing people. Tim has spoke at his conference twice before now. I actually was privileged to be out in the Nashville um, conference when he spoke out there. It was actually at Titan Stadium where the Tennessee Titans play. Uh, Cody had his 8% nation insurance conference there. Tim was a keynote speaker uh, with Ray Lewis, who is a Hall of Fame linebacker who used to play for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, it was a phenomenal event. Cody will be having a conference God willing, at the end of this year, once the COVID-19 is over with, he's shooting for somewhere in October uh, towards the end of the year. That'll be in Las Vegas, and Cody will share all that information with you. Uh, Cody, 29 years old. He owns and operates four insurance-based companies, you guys, grossing over $5 million in sales. Uh, he's grown up in the insurance industry. He knew this is exactly what he wanted to be a part of. Uh, at 20 years old, while going to school full-time, Cody had set a goal that he wanted to make $100,000 in his first year. And while working to accomplish his goal, Cody developed a system to set more appointments and to get the most out of his leads. And after exceeding his goal in less than eight months, that's right, he had a year-long goal. He exceeded it in eight months. Cody realized other agents could use his system and made his mission to help others to do the same. So in 2015, he created a YouTube channel where he provides free trainings to agents and eventually taking off, developing into an entire platform for insurance agents to begin to benefit from. So I am excited to have Cody with us today, a dear friend of mine, dear friend of Tim's. I'm going to bring him on here and dialogue with him for a minute. He's going to um, speak for about 20 minutes and then Tim's going to come in. He's going to do a Q&A with Cody for 10 minutes so you guys will have the opportunity today to ask any questions directly to Cody uh, in regards to whatever he spoke about today. We'll bring you on live. You'll just have to raise your hand. We'll drop you into the live feed. You can ask Cody a question, dialogue with him. So we're super excited. Let me find Cody here and I'll bring him on. Let's see. Cody, can you hear me? I can, buddy. How are you? Man, how are you? Good, man. Really good. Excited to be on this. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, we are so, so appreciative that you're willing to jump on and, and take time out of your evening. Uh, we know you have an amazing wife, Lauren, and the fact that you wanted to join the World Shaker Network tonight as our first special guest. First. There we go. So we were excited to have you. And uh, I just read a brief bio about you, but let me tell you, this is great, Cody, but you're even a better person in person. And the fact that Tim and I have got to uh, meet and dialogue with you over the years. And uh, I was just explaining to everybody about the event in Nashville, how amazing that was. And the 8% Nation Insurance Conference that was scheduled to be coming up this year. But because of the coronavirus and the pandemic going on, uh, Tim was just featured on your live virtual conference, which was amazing this past Saturday. Um, but we just wanted to bring you on, Cody, and this time I know you shared with me what you were going to talk about for 20 minutes. I wanted to keep it a secret. No one today knew that we were going to have a special guest. I was excited to drop this in last minute on everybody. Um, so I've already prepped everybody that you're going to talk for about 20 minutes. Tim's going to hop in, do a Q&A, and then we'll interact with the uh, Shaker Network crew online. They'll have a chance to ask you some questions, bring them on live so you can meet some of them. But uh, how have you specifically been holding up now since this whole quarantine has taken place? And then you can go ahead and segue and transition into um, basically what you want to share with the network tonight. Okay. Awesome, buddy. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, we've been very busy. Um, a lot of good things happening. Uh, I'm, I'm someone that when everyone's retreating in the business world, I look for some, some opportunity to really advance what we're doing. Um, and, you know, so, so what, I mean, we're hiring, uh, we're, we're, we're moving and shaking as you will in the world shaker network. Uh, and so things are, uh, things are good, man. We're, we're staying busy. Um, insurance is a, you know, recession proof biz business, if you will. And so insurance agents are still actively needing to get in front of people, you know, and still actively needing marketing help and training help and, and still need to get out there and make some money. So a uh, huge shout out to you and Tim for allowing me to do this. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing my story and a few other things along the way. So really appreciate it, buddy. Absolutely. The floor is yours. The stage is yours. Um, we'll go probably till about 4.30, Cody, and then we'll do a 10-minute Q&A. That's good if that's good for you. That's perfect, buddy. I will get started immediately. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, hello, World Shaker Network. Uh, I'm Cody Askins. For, for those of you that probably have no clue who I am and are probably wondering who this young kid is, uh, appreciate, appreciate uh, Tim and Joseph for allowing me to spend a couple minutes and help you out tonight. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tim. I'm going to share how we met. Uh, a little later, and I'm a huge fan of Tim's story. I truly believe that that dude is the best public speaker on the planet. Um, I absolutely love what he does, how his mission is to help others, and I'm telling you what, no one does it like Tim. Um, so I, I want to speak tonight on on the message of if you don't quit, you can't fail. We just did the conference, 8% virtual, um, 8% nation virtual conference on Saturday. We were gracious enough to have Tim speak, and we, during that virtual conference, um, we talked a lot about if you don't quit, you can't fail. You know, I feel like a lot of people right now are really, really struggling with everything going on. And in my business, especially, I don't know about you in your guys' business, it would be real easy to quit. It'd be real easy to slow down. It'd be real easy to, thank you, Gloria, it'd be real easy to, to, to fail, if you will. In the insurance world, 92% of people fail, hence why we created 8% Nation. And I'm very passionate about that industry, and I'm going to share why tonight. And hopefully, I'll give you a few nuggets along the way that you can use in your own life. Um, please, if you, as, as we get to questions later, I'd, I'd love to interact and help in any way I can. Again, super, super blessed to be on. Um, I, I grew up in uh, Little Arkansas. Um, I'm currently 29, 29 years old. And I remember, so I'm going to share some things along the way that I really felt like were pivotal points in my life where maybe I could have quit. Maybe there were lessons that I learned. Maybe there were lessons that, that you can learn from tonight. I remember my father's motto growing up was, Cody, never let anyone out hustle you. Never let anyone out hustle you. It doesn't matter if I was at a, ready for practice or a game or school. It didn't matter. The theme, or, or taking out the trash as a chore. The theme was, Cody, never let anyone out hustle you. And I got to give my father a ton of credit for my work ethic today. Um, and I really feel like right now, these last four, six weeks, I've really tried to focus harder than ever because right now would be a time for, for me and others to personally slow down. And so when I think about that, I remember that motto that he instilled in me at a young age. Um, I also remember growing up and I was 16 years old and I was supposed to go work at little Apple Market, little grocery store in Rogersville, Missouri, little bitty grocery store. That was my first job. I was supposed to go work there. It was about 3.30 in the afternoon on a Friday, and I was supposed to go work part-time from 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock. And about 3.30, um, I'm outside, you know, throwing up. Um, we had ate a, but we did a big grill out. We had some friends over, and I was running around and, and, and just got to where I wasn't feeling well at all. I had a pretty upset stomach and started, started just started throwing up, you know, outside. And once my dad, I'm like, hey, I got to work in 30 minutes. Um, I really don't feel well, and I really don't want um, to go to work. And he said something to me that night that has really stuck with me ever since. And when I don't feel like, when I feel like quitting, and when I don't feel like doing something, that really wakes me up and snaps me back into reality. And, and, and what he said to me was, you do whatever you want to do, but you know what I would do. And I'm like, dang. You know, that, 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 that got my attention, right? Because I had seen him never miss a day of work in his entire life. The hardest working dude I know. And he embodies the theme, if you don't quit, you can't fail. And I'm telling you what, I've learned a ton from my father. And so when I was 16 uh, and I didn't feel like going, I went anyway. And there's going to be stuff in our life that if we, when we, when we don't want to do it, guess what? As Tim would, we got to do it anyway, you know? And, and, and so I definitely learned that. I remember when I first started out as an insurance agent, I was 19. Um, I, was, I was an intern. I was going to college, little Baptist Bible college, little Bible college in Springfield, Missouri, playing basketball, full-time student athlete, taking 21 credit hours a semester, no sales experience at all. I remember my first recruiting meeting that I was going to be recruited to be an insurance agent, and there was 10 of us in the room. And the manager looked at me and said, all right, all 10 of you stand up right now. And I'm like, okay. So I, you know, so, so I'm like, what's going on? What's, what is he about to have us do? So I start looking around, you know, start sizing up the competition, if you will. And he says, okay, 
you nine sit down, you can stay standing. He said, maybe one of you will make it. And I'm like, dude, that's a, that's a real positive way to start this whole deal, you know? Uh, it, but, but deep down, like some of you, I thought, this dude doesn't know me very well. Extremely competitive, will never quit, will do whatever it takes to win. And that in that moment, when he pretty much told us nine out of 10 of you will not make it, I decided in that moment, I'm not only going to make it, but I set a goal because I'm a goal guy. I'll probably share some of my goals later on. And I set a goal that I wanted to earn $100,000 my first year. At that point, I was 20 years old in college playing basketball, taking 21 credit hours a semester. 92% of interest agents fail. Very few ever make six figures and nobody ever makes six figures the first year typically. And I wrote down, I'm sitting there at the table in this recruiting event, I wrote down, I will earn $100,000 my first year in sales. I dated it, I signed it, and I hung it up on the wall of my cubicle. And then every day I went out to make that a reality. I did whatever it took, whether it meant leaving on a Friday after school and driving two hours away to little Willow Springs, Missouri and knocking on 175 doors cold. It did not matter. I was committed to making that a reality. I remember in my first year, I would go out and cold call and cold door knock because I really didn't know how to get in front of people but I knew I, need, I wanted to hit my goal. I didn't have a ton of experience in sales. And so I, I, I remember on Sundays dialing hundreds of people to book appointments for the week. I remember going out and door knocking all day on Saturdays. You know, I had a goal that I wanted to sit down and ask 10 people to buy every single week. And no matter what it took, I was going to make that a reality. I also remember a little life lesson that I learned along the way was after my first month, I went and like any 20 year old would and started blowing some money on, 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 a, on, a, on a car, on a vehicle. Uh, my, my vehicle of choice at the time was, uh, it was, this was back in like 20, 2011, 2012, was a 2008 Dodge Challenger SRT8. Unbelievable car, muscle car, I'm a big fan of Challengers. And so my, my parents are out of town in Vegas on a company trip and I go buy this Dodge Challenger. I, I, well, I go to this lot and I tell the guy, I said, hey, I, I wanna buy that car. And he kind of looks at me like, you know, dude, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, you're a young dude. That's, that's a big car. That's a lot of money, you know? And he says that to me and I'm like, you know, I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm, I make enough money to, to buy that car. And he's like, well, okay, well, what, you know, what, what kind of money you make? I said, well, I made nine grand last month. You know, he's like, dude, what do you do? You know, I think he was interested in me recruiting him at that point. And he said, if you get he said, let me go talk to my manager. He went to talk to his manager. His manager came back and said, if you can prove on a pay stub that you made nine grand last month, we'll sell you the car. So I said, all right, give me a computer, printed it out and gave him the pay stub and bought the car. But I tell you that story because my parents got upset that I made a big decision while they were out of town without consulting them first. We're a very tight knit family, very Christian family. And I'd always consulted my father in any decision pretty much at all up until that point. Well, they got upset. So I said, here's what I'll do. I said, I will pay that car off in cash by the end of the summer in the next six months, or I will sell it. And again, it was a $42,000 car. I remember making a decision in that moment to do whatever it took, because if you don't quit, you can't fail. August of that same year, or earlier when I bought the car was February, I went and took a $35,000, $36,000 check up to Great Southern Bank in Springfield, Missouri to pay off that car, simply because I made a decision, right? That's what World Shaker Network is all about. It's about making a decision. It's about shaking the world. It's about doing big things in the world. And nobody's doing bigger stuff than my buddy Tim Story. So I remember that thinking, I made a decision in that moment, two decisions that first year, to make 100K and to pay off that car in, in, in cash. And after eight months, I had earned $117,000 by cold calling and cold door knocking, simply by doing whatever it took. I'm 20 years old, no sales experience. And, and, and there's still a ton of people better at sales than me, but I simply made a decision that I was going to do whatever it took day in and day out. Also, December 28th of 2015, we started, as Joseph alluded to earlier, we started our, our, our YouTube channel, which is Cody Askins. I put out videos every single day 
to help insurance agents. And we have a lot of other salespeople that, that follow our stuff as well. We got about 15,000 agents that, that follow our YouTube channel now. And when I first started putting out content, I really didn't know where it would lead. I just knew that I wanted to help the insurance industry. You know, I always got more out of me helping someone else make a sale than I did me personally making a sale. And so because of that, I remember when I was a young agent, my manager said, hey, we've got these two agents, they're really struggling. Can you go drive four hours this Saturday and go help them make money and go help them succeed? And so I did, I drove four hours, helped them make some sales, let them keep the entire commission. And I got more out of that, more satisfaction out of that, me helping others make sales than I ever did me making sales. Fast forward a few years and I went to 10X2 in Vegas, sat front row, never thought I'd be doing something like this, by the way, sat front row, saw Mr. Tim Story speak. And, I, and, and, and at that point, I did not know who he was. Uh, I'm ashamed to say I really didn't. And he got done speaking and I'm like, in the middle of him speaking, I'm like, I'm getting jacked up. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm getting excited. I don't know whether to run around or start crying. I mean, I was unbelievable. And at the afterwards, I, I told myself, that dude is the best public speaker I've ever seen. And a dream of mine has always been to be a public speaker. Because I watched my grandfather as a Baptist pastor for about 40 to 50 years. Is, is, well, I didn't because I'm 29, but you get the idea. He, 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 he preached for that long. And, and I watched him for a couple decades, and he, he just passed away last year. But my dream to be a public speaker came from him. And then seeing Tim's story on stage at 10X, I thought, man, what am I actually doing to further my dream of being a public speaker? You know, And I really wasn't doing anything. So I decided in that moment, I'm going to start 8% Nation. 8% Nation is a conference to help insurance agents from the fact that 92% fail, only 8% succeed. First event was in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. Mr. Tim Story and, and, and Joseph are both there. Tim did an unbelievable job there as well, right? He was just on the virtual conference. We're having him on again in Vegas. Uh, that conference has grown. We'll have about 1,500 to 2,000 insurance agents in Vegas at that next event. And I tell you that because most people don't realize I've lost over a half a million dollars the first two 8% Nation conferences that we threw, right? And that's not popular, that's not sexy, that's not cool. But that was, that was an investment into the brand. And I say I lost money, we have other companies that actually made money from benefiting from, from, from people actually attending the event, right? However, we created that because I wanna give back to the industry that's helping me so much. I wanna be a public speaker, I'm being asked to do stuff like this and to speak at a lot of events uh, before COVID happened because I put it out there that I have an event, that I'm trying to do big things, that I'm trying to be a world shaker. And I started putting this stuff into motion instead of sitting around and waiting for it to happen. You know, I, I know that I can, I may never be as good of a speaker as Tim's story, but I know that I can impact lives and be an incredible public speaker one day and travel the world and do what I've dreamed of doing ever since I was a little kid, simply by making the decision for that to be the case. So I wanna share a few things really quick, right? I wanna share my daily power five. I believe your daily routine and how you start your day is how you will finish your day. I'm sold on that. Okay, so I'm gonna share my daily power five, five things I do to start every single day. And I'm telling you, if you're not doing them, I encourage you, to think about doing them, all right? So number one, and the last one's crazy, okay? So stay with me. The first one, I believe in waking up between five and 5.59 a.m. I woke up about 5.39 today, all right? They call that the 5 a.m. club to, to get started, but to, I don't care if it's five o'clock or it's, it's 5.59 just before six o'clock, right? It still counts, it's part of the 5 a.m. club, okay? That's the first thing, because I, I believe that it's gonna be a little tougher for me to succeed if I sleep in, you know? I just believe that. When you study successful people, they get their day started off the same way every single day. You know, Tim's story doesn't wake up at 10 o'clock. Tim's story doesn't wake up at nine o'clock. Tim's story doesn't wake up at eight o'clock, you know? He's up way before that, I guarantee it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing is I believe in getting my day started off the workout every single day. I truly believe that energy is everything. Your energy is everything. 
when, 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 in, in, in your day-to-day -day life, you will handle problems and situations that things come up and challenges and obstacles better if you get your day started off with a workout. I like to do something that I don't love to do right out of the gate to wake me up, to get my energy right, and working out is the one thing I can tell the days I worked out, my energy is worse. This, and, and, and you know what? My team's like, dude, you need to be happier. You should have worked out, man, you know? And this little deal, right? I'm sure I can improve and get better. It would have been a lot worse if I hadn't worked out, okay? So that's the second thing, right? And nobody wants this to suck, right? So that's the second thing, work out. Third thing, third thing is I write down my goals every single morning. I believe in doing something big in the world. Like Tim says, I believe everyone was meant to do something great. I love hearing that dude speak. Every time he speaks, I get so, so excited about my goals. I go back and I raise them, you know? And, 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 and I'm going to share some of my goals. My goal is to have 8,000, I'm sorry, I'm sorry 10,000 agents at 8% Nation within the next three to five years. My goal is to own a private jet and travel the world. Why not, right? Another goal is to have a, our company do over 10, uh, to do over $100 million in annual revenue, our companies, okay? And I have a goal to help every insurance agent in the world and be known as the number one insurance sales trainer. I believe you need to be writing down what you want. Those are things that I want. And I write it on every day because I want them. The fourth thing is I believe in getting better every single day. No matter what you do, I believe in watching someone like Tim's story, listen to books, listen to audio books, watching YouTube videos, listen to podcasts. I believe in improving every single day. I believe if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. My good buddy, Coach Burt, will be proud of all the I believes tonight. All right, so that's the fourth thing. Fifth, you guys may do the fourth one or the first four. We'll see if you do the fifth one. Uh, I start my day off with a cold shower. You, you, you look at success people, if it's good enough for Tony Robbins, it's good enough for me, you know? And there's a lot of successful people that start their day off with a cold shower. And it has, it has really, I guess, three positive pieces of it. Number one, it's, he it's healthy for you, right? It's healthy to do. Number two, it wakes me up big time, shakes me up and wakes me up. And the third thing is it forces me to do something to start my day that I don't really want to do because no one actually enjoys taking a cold shower. It's more comfortable to take a warm one. But I do it because if I do that, I'm more likely to go out and knock on a door. If I take, well, take a cold shower, I'm more likely to pick up the phone when I don't want to. When I take a cold shower, I'm more likely to ask for help from a mentor like Tim Story than I am if I don't, right? I, I do those things I don't want to do because I started my day off with something that I don't want to do. A lot of people are preaching that you only have to do stuff that you want to do. I don't believe that to be true. I believe you have to be successful. You have to do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. That's my daily power five. Those are some of my goals. And I want to leave you with something real quick as I have a couple more minutes at this theme we did Saturday. If you don't quit, you can't fail. I don't want to see anybody slow down. I don't want to see anybody quit. I do not want you to fail. And I'm telling you what, I do, I, I do believe that if you just won't stop, if you'll stay consistent, if you'll push through when, 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 when all these trials and tribulations and, and things are coming up in your world, if you just stay focused and you just keep grinding, and you do what my dad said, and you never let anyone hustle you, I guarantee you, Tim, we'll have you on World Shaker Net Network one day too. I'm, 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 I'm very uh, fortunate uh, to be on. Uh, don't know why, frankly, I'm on because I don't think I deserve it yet. However, I am super grateful and I appreciate everybody that was listening. And huge thanks to Tim and Joseph for having me on. Hey, Cody, first of all, you're, you're amazing. So thank you for being on and you do deserve to be on. You are a world shaker. And uh, I know you blessed everybody today. I, I was taking my own notes. If you were wondering why I was looking down, I was writing a bunch of things. But I want to ask ask you a questions before we take some questions from our world shaker network here and bring some people on to ask you questions you talked about your a lot about your dad and the don't quit but you also said that you played sports so did part of that don't quit mentality come from playing sports yeah i think it did i mean i was naturally my dad's naturally competitive and i'm a lot like him um, but i do believe 
sports can play a pivotal role because you know you have to go to practices when you don't want to practice you have to show up to games and be ready and, and your best you don't want to, when you don't want to play you have to you lose a lot you know and so i think mm -hmm. that um sports can translate into business really really well so next question these are all coming from me we'll stay there for for a minute would you not agree that there is power and partnership you talked a lot about it but how vital is power and partnership especially right now yeah. what we're going through we're quarantined we're home all we have is you know phone communication email communication but how vital is power and partnership to you and your success it's a, it's way more vital than i will ever realize i i, I mean years ago I, I don't i won't say i had an ego but I have always been a very confident individual in thinking I can do whatever I want to do, but it, it, mm -hmm. you just get there faster by getting around big time people like Tim Story, right? So Coach Bird talks about prey drive. My prey drive is activated when I get around big time people, when I get around influential people. And not only partnerships in business have been amazing to me, realizing I, I can collaborate and network with others, but realizing that, hey, getting around big time people, um, the more I can hang out with Tim's story and yourself, the more I need to. So, so I have two more questions, Kay, because I want to let everybody out. So my next question is the goal setting, amazing. The private jet, the, the business is thriving. But what I heard amongst all that, Cody, was your servant's heart. Where does your servant's heart come from? I would say both of my parents, you know, my mom, um, I didn't talk about my mom a lot, but my mom was someone that would do anything for us kids at any point in life. You know, she's just deep down, um, really wanted us to turn out good and, and, and really poured into us as a kid, you know? Um, and, and, and I saw my father, um, he would give the shirt off his back, you know, he, he just give money to every homeless person he saw like my parents just you know they instilled not only not only that servant's heart um and i really try to remind myself that's why the last goal i write down every day is i want to help every insurance agent in the world because i don't want it to always be about money yeah i want a lot of money who doesn't right but but at the end of the day um the legacy you leave in your life people don't remember the amount of money you made you know they only remember the impact that you made so i want to leave a big impact i really do that's good. And la last question from me, the married guy to a married guy, how vital is your wife's support to you and what you do? Because I know you're a busy guy, yeah. but I know she plays a huge role in your success. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I definitely can. Um, I can tell you that I wouldn't be where I'm at without her. Um, mm -hmm. What I didn't tell you is, is even when I made 117 grand at 20 years old, she was in my corner as my assistant, um, as my girlfriend before we got married, you know, so she's just always been wow. there. And, and I hate, I hate that she's probably put some of her own dreams on hold to help me and the mission and what we're doing, you know, but I can tell you that without someone in your corner that really, really, and, and I'm not a marriage expert by any means, but I know that without her in my corner, Oh my gosh, this would be a much tougher road. Like if we, if I had to go home and, and she was complaining that, oh, you were on with Tim's story, you know, like she's complaining about that anyway, right? Uh, till, you know, <laughs> 6.30, 7 o'clock. Uh, she would never. And I think that's rare. And I'm super blessed in that respect. And I guarantee you, I would not be where I'm at without. And that's amazing because you said something earlier about the first two 8% nation conferences. You said that you had lost almost a half a million dollars. Most times a wife or a spouse or a significant other would tell you to throw in the tail. But the fact that you've pressed on, you're moved forward, and now you're still going to do 8% Nation this year, God willing, says a lot not only about you, but it says a lot about your wife and her supporting you and your vision and your dream to keep that conference going. And it's not because of you being successful, what hurt a lot of is you want to help others. And that's the reason why you put that conference on. So for anyone watching right now today, if they wanted to find out more about that conference, where would we send them to Cody before we take some questions? Yeah. Uh, 8percentnation.com. 
and, and you're right, if I would have, um, it, it's again, eight percent, that number eight percent spelled out nation.com. If, if I would have, uh, if I would have slowed down and chose to throw in the towel, like we've probably thought, like, like she's definitely thought multiple times and I've probably questioned a little bit every now and then, but if you don't quit, you can't fail. Mm -hmm. Um, if we would have like, like the impact I want to leave that we just talked about a second ago, that is directly a result and will be directly a result of what we're doing with the conference. Like I can't leave a massive impact on the world if I don't get 10,000 insurance agents all in one place and help them grow. I just, I don't think it's possible. That's it, Cody. So if any of you guys want to ask Cody questions right now, you can raise your hand. I'll bring you into the uh, live here so you can dialogue with Cody. So just raise your hands, guys. If you have any questions, we'll probably take questions here for about 10 minutes and then Tim will hop in here. So if you have questions, raise your hands and uh, we'll pull uh, some people in here. Don't everyone be uh, bashful here. But uh, let's raise our hands and we'll bring some people in here, Cody. I'm telling you, he's on fire today. <laughs> I brought a friend in, Cody. I think you might know who he is. How are but, you, buddy? Cody? So I've been listening the whole time. And one of the things I'm loving is that, you know, you can have big dreams and not have a big ego. And the, the thing that people don't realize is that God doesn't kill your ego. He sanctifies it. And by knowing you, it's just God put big in your soul. And so you're just reacting and responding to the big that God put in your soul. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. Thank you, so buddy. So we got some questions coming up, and then I'm going to come and talk to you a little bit. Thank you, buddy. Cool. I, I have a, a world shaker coming on right now. It's a good friend of ours. Let's uh, get him in here and unmute him. JJ, are you there? JJ, my man, how are you? I'm doing great, brother. How you doing? I'm excellent. Thank you for uh, hopping on here. And I don't know if you personally have met Cody before, but I'll, I'll give you the floor and you can ask him a question in dialogue. Absolutely. I don't know Cody yet, but uh, I got to tell you, Cody, uh, your energy, brother, I'm a, I'm a big believer in great energy and your, your energy. I could tell that you belong to this group, a world shaker for sure. Uh, love the fact how you said uh, that everything starts in the morning routine. I'm a big believer of the morning routine. And, and the fact that you're here and, and you're being, you're, you're, you're being, uh, 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 you're expressing the importance of morning routine. That's huge. I just want to go ahead and, and, uh, just wanted to jump on here and, and talk to you in person and say that I've, uh, that I believe in everything you're saying, brother. I could tell that, that you have a clear vision of what you want and what you're doing. So I just applaud you for that. So nice to meet you. Hopefully I can get to meet you in person soon. You too. Likewise, buddy. Thank you so much for the kind words, man. Hey, JJ, it. appreciate Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, you have any questions, uh, make sure you, you raise your hand and we'll bring you guys on here. Let's see. I'm going to bring on. This is cool, man. Let's bring on, let's bring on Miss uh, Borda here. Let's see if she will uh, start her video and we'll unmute her and see. How are you? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, how are you? I'm excellent. I know we've emailed back and forth multiple times, but pleasure to meet you. The floor pleasure is yours. You Ask too. Cody any question you would like. Okay. Um, so my question to Cody is I'm recently a new um, insurance agent myself, and um, I'm working out of New York, but unfortunately right now with New York being um, non-solicitate, I just wanted to get some feedback from him, like trying to figure out what would he suggest for me to be able to do at this point to be able to build myself more as an insurance agent. Cause I want to see myself more like a trusted advisor and be able to help people. So my question to him is what would he suggest for me to be able to sharpen up my skills? That's great. Th thank you very much for the question. And, and, and that's awesome that you're, uh, and it, it, we, got, it, we got some other insurance agents on here. I love that. Um, thank you so much for the question. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually training a, a state farm office out of New York, and they were letting me know that you know, there is a no solicitation right now. Um, one of the things that they're doing and, and, the, and that others in New York can do in, in your respect is um, you can still contact your clients. At least they thought you could, right? I'm not in New York. However, um, they're, they're contacting their clients. Um, if I was in your shoes or their shoes, I'd be doing the same thing. I'd be contacting my customer base, right? My power base, um, for my, my warm market and my customer base are great ways to 
do some fact finding, check in, see what's available, see what they have, see if we need to update anything, and also let them know that uh, that you work off referrals and that you know anybody that can send you, um, or you know, or that you also can help would be a uh, huge, huge, huge um, help. So hope, hopefully that uh, d d does that help. Does that answer your question? What's a couple couple ideas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just it's so difficult now and what and what's going on with getting people to like really talk because everybody's so worried right now at this point about their bills. So what I try to do is I just try to just let them know that we care and we're reaching out to them, just checking how they're doing and um, just letting them know that if they have any questions or concerns that we hear for them, you know, they're part of our family as well. Um, I work for all states. So it's just, you know, just showing that you really care that makes a difference at absolutely. this point. Here, here's another idea too. Um, when I was coaching the State Farm office, they mentioned that they're asking their customer base about, you know, that hey, we're notating your account. We don't see that you have life insurance, you know, with with Allstate, for example. Um, who, who do you currently have life insurance with outside of work? And if, if 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 you know if they say, well, I don't like what they're getting right now is I don't want to talk about life insurance. It kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. You know, I don't want to discuss it. And I teach a three-step process for overcoming objections for anybody in sales, which is agree answer and ask and so what i told them to start saying is you know hey i totally understand it actually it gives me the heebie-jeebies too i don't love talking about it however i'm bringing it up because more people are trying to apply for life insurance with everything going on in the world than we've ever seen before and i and i want to make sure that i didn't forget about you and that i brought it up to you as well so tell me you know now that we got that out of the way who do you currently have your life insurance with okay that's great thank you i like that tip i'm definitely going to use that awesome. um Thank you. Thank you so thank you. Thank much. You for your question. And a pleasure to and pleasure to meet you. The same, guys. Take care. Good talking to you. Uh -huh. yeah, you too. Thank uh -huh. you Bye -bye. so much. We have a couple more here, Cody. Give me one second. I'm gonna bring uh let's see. I'm gonna bring Jonathan's. Jonathan's gonna have a good question here. Let's uh, see if we can get him to start. He's gonna make me tell a story I don't like to tell. Oh, I don't know what this background is. I've been uh are you wearing Golden Gate Bridge. a cardinal shirt in San Francisco? Yeah. <laughs> First off, I just want to say, Cody, nice haircut. I don't know where you're getting haircuts at because all the barbershops here are closed. So I'm like uh, <laughs> not leaving my house without a, a hat. But uh, I just got to say, you got to do me a favor and you got to share your Maserati story with everybody because that's my favorite story that you've ever, uh, ever shared. So I just wanted to remind you to share that anytime I can, I can call you out on, I need to make sure I, I get you to tell that story. <laughs> yeah, you, you've tried to get me tell it multiple times that I haven't, uh, but I'll share it right now real quick. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, so before I bought the Challenger, I was a part-time agent and I had made a, for a couple months and I, I made a little bit of money and did okay. And before I went full-time and what most people don't know, because I don't tell it unless Jonathan's around, that's my good buddy, Jonathan Hakeem from North Star Insurance Advisors. Uh, he, I love the Hakeem family. Good, good, such good dudes. You guys know him really well too. Um, the, I, I bought, I went and bought a Maserati off of eBay for like $20,000 because I was like this 19 year old stupid kid. Let's just call it what it is. <laughs> and it showed up and I, it took like a month to get it, right? I finally get it. I, I drive it off. They drive it off of this, you know, big car delivery thing. And, I, and I, I'm taking it to my house and it doesn't make it home. It breaks down on my way home and it has a blown clutch. Um, it had, which cost $10,000 on a Maserati to fix. And I, bought, I paid 20 grand, which is r ridiculous. It was, it, was a, it was so messed up. Everything was wrong with it. The guy was just a total con artist and scam artist. I, he convinced me to buy it off of eBay, so there was no recourse. Um, I was just totally up a creek without a paddle. It was a dumb move, but I learned a good lesson. And I went and sold the Maserati for 10 grand, also on eBay, through eBay, and was totally honest about everything. Two dudes drove down from New York in a Hummer, picked it up, paid 10 grand, took it back. And that was a life lesson that, I don't want to do it again. Man, life lessons. And here, here you are 10 years later, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, All I, right, I, we're going to take one more. We're going to take one more question. I'm going to bring Gloria on. She's had her, had her hand up here. Let's bring her in here. We'll take one more question. We'll keep you on. And then Tim's going to hop in and chat with you here for a minute. Let's see, Gloria. Let's see if we can bring you on. Hello. Gloria, are you there? Yeah. How are you? Good. How are you doing? 
I'm excellent. Thank you. The floor is yours. You can ask Cody a question. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say I really love your no quit attitude. Like I, I um, am the same. Like I had a dad who was like, you don't call in sick. You don't miss work. There's no excuses. But my biggest question is how do you maintain that, but also stay balanced? Like, so that it doesn't backfire and you turn into a workaholic that has no life. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Probably something I've struggled with along the way as well. Um, to be honest, I would say that uh, phenomenal question, really. I would say that one of the biggest things I do is I try to be extremely focused and extremely productive when I am at the office. So I'm normally at the office for about, um, I would say before eight until about six, six thirty. Um, but being, but being super productive with the time that I have, I've found like, cause, cause you think about it. Um, a, a lot of agents over the course of an eight, 10 hour day, they're goofing off. They're talking to friends or drinking coffee with, 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 with the buddies. And they're not really being super productive with the time that they have. And you can gain an hour or two or three a day on your competition by simply when you're in the moment being super focused high activity and super productive. And, you know, when, I, I have trouble shutting it off, but when it's time to shut it off, you know, you at least know when you lay your head on your pillow that night, you know, that, hey, um, I did all I could and I was proud of my effort today. Okay, I appreciate it, thank you. You're very welcome, thank you, thank you. I like that. that. Cody, you're looking good. You too, buddy, you're looking even better. Hey, I, I, I just enjoyed just listening and listening and listening because I think that your points were so excellent, the, the different points that you brought, but also the spirit behind it. And what, what some people don't realize is that you could have excellent points and principles, but you gotta have that spirit behind it and that's the fuel. So part of it is innate, part of it is learned, but part of it, as you said, by waking up early like I do too, I'm one of the, before five o'clock guys. The cold shower, I have not tackled that yet. <laughs> but it's working for you. So one question I wanna ask you, Cody, before uh, we move on, and, and again, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on today. Um, you know, I feel like guys like myself and Ed Milet and others, we, we're blazing a trail for a guy like you to follow so you're next, and I high five you, and I'm excited about that. But talk to me a little bit about this idea. Um, how important is it to leave the correct legacy? And the reason I, I say that, because I feel like too many people today, they think singular instead of plural, and that you know, in the conversations that we've had with each other, I'm, I'm noticing that you think plural. You know, you think you're thinking legacy even at a young age, but tell us why it's so important to leave a legacy and to think about more than just ourselves. Thank you, buddy. Uh, and, and I'm super grateful you had me on, by the way. Uh, I, I would say that, um, and, and you know what, when you talk about legacy and impact, before I get to my answer, dude, you had more of an impact at 10X2 than you'll ever realize. You know, you just did. Um, and I really don't believe I'd be where I am if I hadn't heard you speak there. I truly No, that touches me for real. Thank you, buddy. Um, I know that even when I was 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, I always knew that I didn't want to just like you talked about, I didn't want to be regular. You know, I, I want to do something mm -hmm. big in the world. And for me, yes, it's about, you know, plural and doing some big things and leaving a legacy, you know, like I want you know, when, when people think about insurance one day to feel like that dude did more than anyone else in the history of insurance. And there's a lot of amazing people that have blazed a trouble for me. Um, but along the way too, while legacy is super important is, is a, what, what people lose sight of sometimes. And I'm really trying to like make sure that that's not the case is, is reputation. Um, mm. I feel like for me to leave a big legacy, I've got to have a phenomenal reputation. So when we have, if, when we have, if and when we ever have an unhappy customer, I call them from my cell phone. I don't care if it's eight o'clock at night, you know, on a Sunday. Wow. Like I want to leave a, I want to be, I want to have, I want to be, I want to be liked by everyone. 
you know, that's probably Cardone would probably say that's a limiting belief that, that, you know, you can't be like everybody. I struggle with that a little bit. I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I want people to like me. And I, I, I tend to think that me leaving a big legacy is based on me doing, not only doing right by everyone, cause obviously he does too, but, but really, um, being liked by everyone, you know? And yeah, but I'm, I'm okay with that, Cody. I think that, you know, I talk to Grant almost every day, yeah. but I would say that I would rather err on the side that you're talking about because I think that's, we got a difference of temperament between you and uh, Gary V or you and a Grant. And, and part of your temperament is what's working for you is that your is that your heart is so open, and then when your heart is open like that, your heart becomes vulnerable. So people need to hear this. This is very very powerful. What a lot of people are saying is that nope, I don't want my heart to be vulnerable. I don't want the the potential of of getting hurt. But when you are a servant, and you care, and you go the extra mile your heart will be hurt. But I'm going to tell you as being an older guy than you, it's worth it all. I, I would do it all again, the way I did it. Um, calling people who didn't think I would call. It's, it's very common, uh, Cody, that someone will DM me. And so some young guy and he'll say like, I'm struggling. I know you're not going to call, but here's my number. And I'll call. And this is a true story. Seven out of 10 times they go, is this a real Tim story? <laughs> <laughs> but but I call because I have a big heart. And so the big heart, the big heart is gonna is gonna work. And then what happens is that in the places that we get wounded, don't worry, we're connected to the healer. So we'll be okay. Right. So Cody, best way for us to work with you if someone wants to sign up for any programs you're doing or anything you're doing. You got a lot of people that are on this call that are in the same space as you. So Anything, any way you can help us? What could they sign up for? What are you doing? Yeah, thank you, buddy. I mean, I, I would love, um, I would love to just get connected. You know, um, if, if if you want to follow me on Instagram at Cody.Askins, happy to help any way I can. Um, my favorite two places, media, media wise, are Instagram and YouTube. You know, I've been YouTubing for four and a half years and, and stayed consistent with it. And we've got one of the bigger insurance YouTube channels for training and helping insurance agents, simply because we didn't quit. You know, so uh, I'm beyond honored to be on this. And, and you don't know how big this is for me and how cool it is and how much it's going to encourage me to keep doing what I'm doing. So thank you. Okay. okay. Love and appreciate you, Cody Askins. And uh, let's clap him out. Thank Thanks, you, Cody. Thank you. And he has a phenomenal wife. Um, she is really alongside him. And I like the, the thing that Joseph was saying about how important is your wife in your relationship. And he said, very, very, very important. Man, I'm so excited about World Shakers. Uh, World Shakers is something that I was wishing I had the time to do and just did not. You know, there was a time, because I, I always like to be very, very open, that I used to have people paying $1,000 a month a thousand dollars a month to talk to me and we had a line from here down to the zoo and i don't even know where the zoo is and um the the thing is is that i i was still too busy to to do that and so for us to to bring the price down to 47 dollars a month i was challenged by a lot of people and the reason i brought it so low is it so people don't have an excuse on <laughs> why their dream did not come to pass. And some of you have heard me say this before that at the end, I'm looking at my stats here, at the end of people's lives, so many people feel like their dream never came to pass. So now here we are on Monday nights, okay? And we have the, the, the chance to talk about our dreams, our goals and being a world shaker and uh, for only $47 a month, people, not a week, a month. And um, if you're excited that you've become part of the World Shakers Network, would you just tell us real quick right there? Just say amen. Just if you're, if you're excited about being a part, just say amen, 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 
Amen, amen. Look at all those amens, Joseph. Hey, amen, amen, amen. Because, guys, I have a special announcement. and just so you know, this takes my time. I'm a human. <laughs> I'm a human being. I got to stop everything uh, on these Mondays and be more than prepared. People don't realize how hard I work, Joseph. Look at all these notes. I got notes, notes everywhere, binders of notes. Other notes, notes upon notes. I got one binder that has 1,300 pages of notes alone. And so we're doing this because we care and we believe in you. And we believe that you're going to prosper in these areas. Just hear this. You're going to prosper spiritually, mentally, financially, your job, okay, uh, in your physical life, in your social life, and in your family. You're going to prosper in every area of your life. And um, so I want to challenge you, if each one of you would try to sign up somebody for World Shakers by next week. And I saw that Jody Parr and a couple other people were advertising this. Each one, reach one. If each one of you just talk to one of your friends to sign up, it makes it kind of cool because then it's like a collective of people that you get to know. And then as, as uh, time goes on, what I'm gonna do is get some of you to go to different groups that we have going already. We're starting, uh, we are working on it today. In about probably 20 days, I'm gonna do an overseas group with people from Europe and South Africa, because they're on the same time zone, okay? And so we're gonna be doing that once a week with all these Europeans. And so from time to time, you could even jump on those groups. Uh, Joseph, you had something interesting to tell me. Yeah, before we end, I have a special promotion. Okay. Joseph Mendoza. Joseph's gonna slide in here. Come and tell us. So I promised you guys in the beginning that we had a special promotion. I know last week we uh, challenged you guys to each one reach one. And if you got someone to sign up, we would send you a free ebook. And uh, I made sure that those books have been sent out. If you have not, or the person you referred did not get it, please reach out to me directly. I had one of our world shakers reach out to me a little bit ago. Our good friend, Cherie Saylor, her friend didn't get it. We sent it to her instantly. So if you have not got yours, please reach out to me, joseph at timstory.com. But what we're going to honor today to next week is, okay, is if you refer or bring someone to the network, we are going to give you a code for a hundred percent off their first month. Yes, I said that correctly. They will get their first month free. So hundred percent discount on the first month. They will not have to pay the $47 up front just for you referring them. And Tim's looking at me with his eyes all big, but we are going to do that for you guys from today to next Monday. Okay. So all they got to do is go to www.timstory. I'm going to type it in for you guys right now. So that way you guys know it's good to go.com. That is forward slash world shaker. Okay. When you guys get there and check out the promo code is promo code is WS, which stands for world shakers and it's capital and it's 2020. So there's the code for you guys right there. If you refer anybody, they will get their first month free. You guys, we wanted to extend that to all your friends, family, or anybody that you currently know to help them get on the World Shaker Network and uh, enjoy our lives every Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we're glad you all jumped on today. We can't thank Cody enough for joining us today. And just know once a month, we'll be bringing a special guest on. That guest will be able to interact with you. We'll let them talk for 20 minutes, ask some questions, bring you guys on. And uh, so that way you guys are a part of this network as well. Um, we will send out an email of this recording. A lot of you are messaging me asking about last week's recording. As you can imagine, Zoom has been inundated with the whole coronavirus and Zoom has been experiencing some technical difficulties with recordings. I've been working with their engineering team to try to get last week's recording. I see that right now is recording. So I will have today's for you tomorrow so we will send out the link tomorrow so you can watch the recording of this uh, if you guys have any questions just reach out to me directly i'm going to put my email once again at the bottom joseph at tim 
story.com. I will get back to you guys fairly quick. Let's each one reach one and let's get a friend or family member to sign up and we will give them their first months free. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight, Monday night. Uh, we pray that you have a great rest of your week and we can't wait to see you all next Monday and uh, have a great night. Thank you.